Hey, welcome back to the Gospel of Luke. We're at chapter 19, today verses 36 to 40. Let's follow along. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was now drawing near to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. So, this is the triumphal entry. Here he comes, the crowds are there, they're proclaiming him. Here comes, you know, the king. And the Pharisees don't want any of this. This is, uh, this is out of the rigid rule set. So, Jesus, you tell them not to do this. The response of Jesus is our focus here today. Notice he said that if these, I would tell these to keep silent, the stones would cry out. Why would the stones cry out? Have you ever thought about that? Why would the very, why would nature itself uh, rebel at the idea of being silent as Jesus enters Jerusalem? Well, friends, it's because Jesus is the creator. John 1, uh, the Gospel of John says that all things were created by him. Without him was not anything created that was created and made. He is in the beginning with God. He is the word made flesh. He is the creator. He is the agent out of the three, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one that was charged to be the creative agent who would create all of our creation. Jesus is your and my creator in a sense. All of God is, but Jesus was the agent. Interesting here that he's coming to his, pl to his place and the people are proclaiming him king. This is the way it should be. This is what it should be for you and I day by day. Jesus is my king. When I get up, my thought shouldn't be, oh no, what did the president of the United States say? Oh no, what did the president of this country? No, the question is, when I get up in the morning, I want to find out what does my king say to me? And so what do I do? I take my Bible and I read it. I keep a physical copy of the Bible. I'm going to have my phone there, but I keep a physical copy of the Bible right with me, right on my bedstand, right next to my bed, so that what I can do in the morning is I can read the Bible quietly and hear from my president, my king, Jesus. So here he is, he's coming into Jerusalem. The very stones would cry out if Jesus commanded them to be quiet because all nature is in support of Jesus. And all nature, I guess, except for fallen men. But you and I can be an exception to that. May we let him transform our hearts. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this picture, this triumphal entry the triumph will not remain because they're going to crucify our king. And yet, Lord, for us, it's a moment of rejoicing. We get to see, kind of experience ahead of time, some, some tinge of what it will be like, what our eyes will see one day, not far from now. Lord, we're glad that Jesus is coming visibly, physically, audibly, uh, personally, uh, one day very soon. But right now, we're still here. The church, not quite finished not finished with your work, not finished with your purposes. Bless us and build us, Lord, even in these crazy hours. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So may God be with his church, and may he help us. May we give every morning Jesus' first hit, Jesus' first priority. He is our king. May he bless you. May you be blessed by the king this day.